Namaste. Namaste. And welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali. Hum ashe hey. Kai say hey up. And today we're going to be reacting to Negationism in India, Hiding the True History of Islam. And um, in the description it says, Negationism is the somatic denial of historical facts to suit a particular political agenda. And um, I, we haven't watched this yet, but... I feel like India is probably not the only country that has this problem. I feel like um, most history books have some kind of government stamp on them that, you know, kind of makes it seem like it's the history they want you to hear about. Like, they tell you the stuff about other people coming and invading, or they tell you, like, um, you know, things that have done been done bad to you or all the good things about your country but when they and the stuff that they talk about that you've done to other countries is usually like this um i know india doesn't have that problem they don't invade other countries but this is just my um my own idea of this and uh anyways we do know uh I did a video yesterday, if you haven't seen it, about the citizenship bill, and we heard the exciting news that it did pass. So hopefully that will make some good progress, and the minorities that are coming from these other countries will get some uh, citizenship and accountability, and hopefully pay some taxes and be a part of society, um, because they obviously cannot go back to their countries that they were coming from because they're not being treated fairly there. So hopefully we think here at the Jan family that this is a good bill and hopefully it is and hopefully it will make things better for the future. Um, we also talked a few things about you know like population control and um, you know majority. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. I'm interested to see uh, what they have to say on uh, negationism in India. So let's start it up, Anji. The atrocities committed by the Nazis on the Jews and the Gypsies during the Second World War are a recorded fact of history. Yet there are people living in denial of this bitter truth. Really? They are called negationists. Being a negationist in Europe is not easy. Over and above, extracting a heavy cost on one's social reputation, in certain countries like Germany, it is downright illegal to deny the Holocaust. Yeah. The norm is very different in India. In fact, it is just the opposite. The negationists of India are not just tolerated, they are effectively celebrated. Yeah. For they are rewarded by the establishment and often placed in the top echelons of power. Thus, place they go about the task of rewriting history and conjuring up centuries of Hindu-Muslim unity out of thin air. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, the Muslim conquests down air. to the 16th century were for the Hindus a pure struggle of life and death. Entire cities were burned down, mm -hmm. the populations massacred, hundreds of thousands killed in every campaign, and similar numbers deported as slaves. Every new invader made of the literally his hills of Hindu skulls. The Bahmani sultans made it a rule to kill 100,000 Hindus in a year. In 1399, Timur killed 100,000 captives in a single day, many more on other occasions. The conquest of Vijayanagar in 1565 left large areas of Karnataka depopulated, and so on. The American historian Will Durant summed it up as follows. The Islamic conquest of India is probably the bloodiest story in history. It's a discouraging tale, for it's evident moral is that civilization is a precious good whose delicate complex of order and freedom, culture and peace, can at any moment be overthrown by barbarians invading from without or multiplying within. Yet these traumatic events of the past that pushed Hindu civilization to the brink of extinction don't find a place in the collective memory of the inheritors of this civilization. The credit for this goes to the negationism institutionalized by first the Indian National Congress, second the Aligarh Muslim University, and third the Marxist historians. 
The rewriting of history textbooks began even before India attained independence. Congress supported the Khilafat movement with the aim of encouraging the Muslims to join the struggle for freedom. But their strategy backfired by further intensifying the separatist tendencies among the Muslim community. At that time, Congress leaders were not yet actively involved in the rewriting of history. They were satisfied to quietly ignore the true history of Hindu-Muslim relations. After the communal riots of Kanpur 1931, a Congress report advised the elimination of the enemy image by changing the contents of the history books. Subsequent generations of Congress leaders would profess negationism very explicitly. The second major source of negationism is Aligarh Muslim University, often described as the cradle of Pakistan. Unlike their more orthodox allies in the Deoband school, intellectuals of Aligarh found it difficult to reconcile their agenda of modernizing the Muslim community with the blood-stained history of Muslim rulers. Around 1920, Aligarh historian Mohammed Habib launched a grand project to rewrite the history of the Indian religious conflict. The main points of his version of history are as follows. One, trivializing the original accounts of Islamic chroniclers describing the slaughter of Hindus, the abduction of their women and children, and the destruction of their places of worship, by calling these accounts as exaggerations. Oh Two, downplaying the religious zeal of the conquerors by attributing the loot and plunder to economic motives. Three, bringing in the racial factor and portraying the barbarism of the conquerors as unrelated to the doctrines of Islam. Four, the violence of Islamic warriors was portrayed not to have played an important role in the establishment of Islam in India. These arguments cannot stand the test of historical criticism. We can demonstrate this with the example of Mahmoud Ghaznavi, who ravaged the lands of Gujarat, Sindh and Punjab. Ghaznavi was a Turk, yes, but certainly not a barbarian. He patronized the arts and literature and was a fine calligraphist himself. The barbarity of his campaigns cannot be attributed to his ethnic stock nor did he care for material gain. He left the rich mosques on his path untouched. He even turned down a Hindu offer to give back a famous idol in exchange of a huge ransom. I prefer to appear on Judgment Day as an idol breaker rather than an idol seller. Mm -hmm. The final boost to negationism was delivered by the Marxist historians who took over the reins of India's educational and research institutes and built a reputation for unscrupled history writing in accordance with the party line. They took negationism to a whole new level. For Marxists like Bipin Chandra, communalism is not a dinosaur, meaning that it is a strictly modern phenomenon. They explicitly denied that before the modern period there existed such a thing as Hindu identity or Muslim identity. Even now, Negationism in India is practiced with the utmost prowess by historians and writers under the spell of Marxism. It would be wrong to expect that it will die a natural death because it has become a deeply entrenched bias and a thought habit for many people. Children usually survive their parents and negationism will survive Marxism for some time unless a serious effort is made to expose it on a ground scale. Read more think critically, gather the courage to face the truth. Even the Upanishads say, Satya meva jayate, truth shall prevail. I am Kunrat Elst for so Upward. Sad. This is unbelievable that yeah. they have actually like rewritten history books to not show um, these barbarians that have invaded India the way they've really come, the amount of people that they've killed and slaughtered, that they were trying to hide it and cover it like it was for economic reasons or it wasn't, you know, uh, religious based or it was crazy. I mean, I feel like history books has always been tweaked a little bit, but this is like extreme. This is unbelievable that it's almost like um, whitewashing the history 
you know, a little bit so that it doesn't seem quite so extreme. And then I feel like, you know, you start to forget history or they always say you have to learn from history so you don't make the same mistake twice, you know. India has always been an open arms country, but I feel like invader after invader after invader has come in and hit you guys hard. And it was such a beautiful country. And it's it's starting to go back in that direction, like of, you know, becoming, you know, a great country and doing all these things like it. I We've been doing all these videos. It, it's like up and coming. It's the next big country. So I feel like so many great things are coming from that. But if history is being kind of washed away a little bit and not made so serious, you know, how many people were killed and slaughtered and, and some of it was about religion. It's everybody that came, it wasn't about religion, but when the Muslims came, it was about religion. And it's just crazy that they're trying to make it seem not so bad and they're, which is not going to help the future. You know, the quote that I like that he said, you know, the con Islamic conquest of India was the bloodiest story in history, you know, and they're trying to make it not, you know, so bad. But then if you don't remember how bad it really was, then at any moment you're going to be overthrown by similar barbarians invading from without or from within. So, you know, letting people in sometimes is also becomes part of the problem. If your door is always open, um, you know, that lets them everybody in so you know making sure that you don't you do learn from your mistakes that you don't keep making the same mistakes over and over yeah. again i love that you have an open arm policy but i don't want to see you know people taking over the country or you know new invaders or more wars or you know destruction of such a beautiful country so we really do need to learn from history. This is very disturbing to me that, that history books and there are people that just say like, um, these things never happened or they were kind of, they kind of happened, but you know, it's not well documented and that there are universities that are preaching this stuff. It's crazy. But, um, you know, we went back talking about the multiplying within. When we go back to the population control, we talked about, I talked about this yesterday in the video, was, you know, we did the, some of the, um, ran the, some of the numbers in the video talked about how Hindus went from, you know, uh, they multiplied at least a little bit over two times in 50 years. So since independence, they multiplied double, a little bit over double in 50 years. But the Muslim population multiplied four times, you know, going from 50, 50 million Muslims to 190 million Muslims. So four times that. And both of that is a lot. And from a country that has 1.3 billion people, if the multiplying keeps multiplying, keeps multiplying, you're going to have a more people than you can handle. And the last time there was a huge multiply of, of Muslims in the community, they broke off and now is Pakistan, Bangladesh, like, so there does definitely needs to be population control as a whole. Yeah. But this is really, I mean, in the next 50 years, you think if that continues the way it's going, there's going to be more people. I, I don't even know that number is like outrageous in my head right now. It definitely needs to be probably the next bill. The citizenship bill, I think, was helping people coming from these other countries, these minorities that needed like asylum and it was giving them citizenship and accountability and to pay taxes and be a part of society where they feel safe. Um, but I think the next thing needs to be some kind of population control so that you don't have multiplying within you know, an issue as well. And, you know, people invading from without, if your doors are always open, those are kind of the two things, you know, definitely watching the open door policy maybe needs to be more stricter. And there may be needs like China, you know, putting either taxes, if you have, you know, more than three kids or more than two kids, or, you know, a birth control, if that's not an option, then, then, people need to be taxed if you can't afford to feed and clothe and send to school more than two or three children 
you shouldn't be having 15 children. This is, you know, is going to become a huge issue when there's not enough land left, there's not enough food left, there's not enough water left. Where are all these people going to go? And then is India going to be divided again, right? Yeah. This is unbelievable that this happens and I'm sure it happens in other countries I, and I like I said I feel like the government always has a stamp on what goes in the history books I don't I, maybe not to this extent this really seems like washing away some of history so it doesn't seem quite so bad but this is not okay and like he said at the end the truth will prevail so hopefully stuff like this videos like this that talk about what really happened and like you said read more watch more share more so this is amazing and thanks for sharing this with us and i hope you guys like this don't forget to subscribe join our wonderful family and we'll see you tomorrow bye, bye.